This Tuesday evening, we come to the second of our talks on keeping watch. Last evening, we considered how God keeps watch over us, both watching to see if we are living a life pleasing to him, but also to keep a watchful eye on us for our protection. This evening, we will consider the fact that God keeps watch over his word. This might seem a rather strange topic, but that's only because we might have a tendency to undervalue God's word. Now, don't get me wrong, we're not talking merely about God watching over the Bible. The Bible is loosely called the word of God, and I'm happy with that description. It means that we allow God to speak through any and every bit of it. We should indeed value our Bibles and read them often. But the Word of God existed long before the Bible ever came into existence, and indeed before anyone could even write. As St John says at the outset of his Gospel, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When we read the account of God creating the world right at the start of things, we saw the word in action. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. When God speaks, that is the word of God. His thoughts are expressed through his words and his words achieve what is commanded. And there was light. St. John goes on in his gospel to say, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yes, the word appeared in human form in Jesus. He embodied the word and he spoke the word and he was the word. No wonder, therefore, that God watches over his word to preserve it and prosper it. As for last evening, our key text came from Jeremiah, so again it comes from Jeremiah this evening. The Lord watches over his word to perform it. So when we read the Bible, whether on our own or in a group, or when we listen to it being read in church, we are not merely doing Bible study. That is not the word of God. What we should be doing is listening for the voice of God speaking to us through the Bible. The Pharisees did a great deal of Bible study, but they failed to hear the word of God. Jesus said to them, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. Jesus is the living word. Jesus is the word to be found in the scriptures. The scriptures are meant to lead us to Jesus and not to be an end in themselves. That is why St Paul describes scripture in this way. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable to you for teaching, for reproof, for correction and training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The scriptures are meant to be life-giving and life-changing. The word of God is always practical. It achieves things. It's never just theory or theology. Isaiah wrote, So will my word accomplish that which I purpose. That's not a question, but a powerful statement. That is why it is desperately important that we hear God speaking to us. Yes, each one of us, each one of us, not just the clergy. And why do we think that Jesus' first response to the devil in his wilderness temptations was, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is vital that we hear the word of God. It's when God speaks into our lives that things happen and change takes place. 
The words of man won't do that to us. But when the still voice of God speaks in the silence of our hearts and in our consciences, it is very, very different. His voice may be quiet and gentle, but its effect is dynamic. Here are words of Jeremiah once again. Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer which breaks rocks in pieces? An active and powerful word. And again in the letter to the Hebrews, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. That word does something in our lives. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God to convince the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That's why it's also important that we see God's word growing and spreading. The world needs the word of God. It's not just us, it's not just Christians who need the word of God. The world needs the word of God. In Luke's Acts of the Apostles, we read several times the word grew. An interesting expression, the word grew or spread. Luke uses this expression three times. Chapter 6, verse 7, chapter 12, verse 24, and chapter 19, verse 20. The word of God is the only way that the church grows. The word of God comes to us through the indwelling spirit. The word of God comes to us through the Bible. The word of God comes to us through inspired sermons. But remember, the word of God is fully revealed in Jesus. And the purpose of the word is to encounter God in a relationship and to be transformed. The world needs this word. Sometimes the word of God is called the seed. This is a good description of how the word is planted in people and in us. And if it is given the right environment, it will grow and grow. Jesus will be more and more formed in us. This is true of us as individuals and true of the local church. So how does the word grow? As Paul says, one sows, another waters, and God gives the increase. In fact, Paul said that it was he who sowed, Apollos who watered, and God gave the increase. The world cannot believe, cannot even hear, but cannot believe unless someone passes on the gospel to them, the word, the good news of Jesus Christ. On the whole, this cannot be done in church, since the world is not in church. However, the gospel should often be heard in the church as well, as part of the spectrum of sermons. But you and I, or at least those who've got the courage, should be prepared to share something of our faith in our home, our workplace, on the bus, over the internet, on Facebook, in the shops, when playing a round of golf, wherever it is, prepared to sow something of the seed of the Word of God. As St Peter told us, we should be prepared to give a defence to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you, yet to do it with gentleness and reverence. But it's not just the sowing of the seed that matters, but the follow-up. Apollos watered. Some of us may not be evangelists, in fact, most of us are not evangelists, but we can support the inquirer and the new believer. We can pray for them, bring them to church, or take them to a home group. Sermons are also meant to be a help in strengthening believers, especially those who are on the edge, doubting, questioning. But whether we sow or water, it is going to be God who gives the increase. And we need to recognise this. 
The growth of the Word of God is a miracle. We need to pray for this miracle in these days. Surely we long for the Word of God to grow in our church, in our community and in our country. God can do it, but only if we play our part. Let us close with a prayer. O Lord, your word is spoken by the prophets. Your word is written in the scriptures. Your word is lived in your people. Your word is Jesus. Your word shines upon our path. Grant us so to hear your voice, that we may spread your word in this troubled world. Amen.